Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a Boston cream pie which is in fact a cake, a cake that is filled with a pastry cream and covered with a delicious chocolate glaze. Now, it was invented in Boston, hence the name Boston Cream Pie. And the reason it's called a pie is back in the late 1800s when this recipe was developed, um, cakes were baked in pie tins. So that's the reason why. So first uh, thing we need to do is make the pastry cream. And there is a recipe along with a video on the site on how to do that. And you can even make uh, the pastry cream a couple days in advance and just store it in the fridge. So once that's done, then uh, we're going to make the uh, sponge cake. Sometimes Boston cream pie uses a white butter cake, but we're going to make a sponge cake today. So preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 180 degrees Celsius, and you will need uh, two 8-inch, that's 20 centimeter uh, cake pans, and either butter or spray with a non-stick uh, cooking spray, and then line the bottom of the pan with uh, a piece of parchment paper. So once you have that, then we're going to start the uh, cake batter. If you have a stand mixer like I do, use a paddle attachment, but you could just as easily use an electric hand mixer. So in the uh, bowl, we're, we're going to put three um, large egg yolks and two large eggs. And keep the whites because we will be using those. And have all your eggs at room temperature. And to that, I'm going to add a half a cup, that's 100 grams of granulated white sugar. Now, we're going to beat this on high speed until the uh, batter is very thick and r fluffy. That'll take somewhere between three and five minutes. Okay, so this is what you're looking for. You want them really thick and fluffy. And see how thick they are when I raise the, the uh, beater? It just kind of slowly dissolves back into the uh, batter. So that's what we're looking for. So now I'm just going to uh, beat in a half a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And try to use the pure. It has better flavor than the imitation ones. Okay. So we're done with that. Now you don't have to do this at home, but I'm just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to transfer this over to a clear bowl. Make it easier to see what I'm doing. Okay, so now what I have here is a half of a cup of um, cake flour. It's about 60 grams. And I'm going to add to that a quarter of a cup, that's 35 grams of just white all-purpose flour, and uh, one uh, teaspoon of baking powder, get some rise for the cake, and a quarter teaspoon of uh, salt. And I'm just gonna whisk that together. And put that aside. And then in a clean bowl with the uh, whisk attachment this time, I'm going to take those three remaining large egg whites and have those at room temperature. And then I'm just going to uh, beat this on medium, medium, low speed just until they're foamy. As you can see, the whites are nice and foamy. We've kind of broken them up. So now I'm just going to increase the speed to medium, medium high, and gradually beat in a quarter of a cup, that's 50 grams of granulated white sugar. And we just want to beat the, whip this until soft, moist peaks. We don't want them really stiff. We want them um, soft.
just want to make sure and scrape your sides because you want to make sure all that sugar is beaten into the whites. So, just a little longer. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. They kind of fall over when you raise. If you have a stiff peak when you do this, they stay at, at, um, straight up, but this one kind of falls over. That's what soft peaks mean. And that way we can easily fold the uh, whites into the egg yolk mixture. So, as you can see, there's a few steps here. So what we, you want to make sure is to have everything out before you start so you don't uh, forget anything. So you take your uh, egg yolk and what we're going to do is gradually add the beaten egg whites into the um, egg uh, yolk mixture. So just add a bit and then you can use, I'm just going to use my rubber spatula, you could use a wire whisk and just fold through. Let me just do this in a couple turns here. Now you don't want to get, uh, we're not using the mixer because we don't want to over mix this because the whites is going to help us get that nice light and airy sponge cake. So there we go. Big strokes through the, see if you use a nice wide bowl like this you can uh, really do it easily. Okay and don't worry if there's still a few streaks of white that's fine. So now what we want to do is have a strainer or if you have a sifter and we're going to um, gradually add our flour mixture into our batter. So just sift it over the top. And then again with big strokes, fold this in. This is a really nice textured um, cake. It really goes nice with the pastry cream and the chocolate glaze. I'm going to do this in about three stages. You do it gradually because if you did it all at once, it's like really hard to fold it in or you tend to over mix. So that's why we do it in uh, three stages here. Because while I mean we will deflate it a bit folding flour in, we don't want to over mix it. Okay and the final. Okay. Use a lot of different techniques with this cake. Okay. So now just kind of make a well as much as you can in the center because what we're going to do is add what I have here is two tablespoons about 28 grams of unsalted butter and that's melted and then three to add to that three tablespoons of milk and then what you um, want is don't have it at room temperature have it like just slightly warm like lukewarm and you can either add it in the center or I'm going to just Pour it down the side, maybe easier. And just fold it in. Butter adds a nice flavor to this. Okay. And that's our batter. You could use this cake for all types of things. Be nice with, filled with. Uh, fruit and cream that would be nice in the summer so just take your two pans and as best as you can evenly divide between the you could weigh your your pans if you have a scale to get the exact otherwise I'll do like I'm doing here and just eyeball it you want uh, about the same amount of batter in each pan because you want them to bake in, with within the same amount of time. If you had one uh, have a lot more batter then that would take a lot longer to bake. So 
Okay, that looks pretty close. And what I like to do with a um, sponge cake is just kind of tap your pan and get rid of any, because sometimes there's air bubbles. So if you tap, just get rid of those. So into the oven, somewhere around 18, 20 minutes, or until they're nice and springy to the touch, or toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. Okay, our sponge cakes are now done. As you can see, they're nice golden brown and kind of spongy when you um, touch them. And if a toothpick inserted in the center, will um, come out clean. And now, as soon as they come out of the oven, just take either a knife or a spatula like this and just run it around the edge of the cake, separate it from the sides. That. And then just let them cool two, three minutes, and then we're going to take them uh, out of the pans. Okay, now we're going to remove the cakes from the pan. So take a, uh, another rack, put it over the top, and flip it over. Careful because the pans are still quite hot. And then just gently peel off the parchment paper. Like so. And then we're just going to reinvert. Like so. And just do that with the other one. A little awkward with these big mitts on, but. And okay, so now just let these cool completely and then we'll assemble the dessert. Okay, now our, our cakes have completely cooled. So now we'll make the chocolate glaze. And all that is, is take four ounces, 120 grams of semi-sweet chocolate and just finely chop that and put that in a bowl. And to that, what I've done is taken a half a cup, that's 120 milliliters of heavy cream and uh, one tablespoon, about 15 grams of butter and just melted that until and brought it just to boiling. Now you can do this in, uh, on the stove or I just did it in the microwave. And you want the cream really hot so it'll melt the chocolate. And then just gently stir until the, the chocolate is all melted. If you find, find that it didn't all melt, then you could just pop it in the microwave for a few seconds. But. That's a good reason why you should finely chop your chocolate because then it just melts really easily into the hot cream. Okay. And that's that for the glaze. So now we'll just leave that to assemble the dessert and just take a plate or I've got a cake pedestal here and take one of your cake layers and just flip it over and then um, you want your pastry cream. Now, what I've done here, if you just make it and then it's a little hot, you can put it on, put it inside a, a large bowl that's filled with ice and that'll cool it off and thicken it up a bit. And then just, and don't worry, this is a real casual cake. So if it kind of pour, um, goes over the sides, that's okay. Okay. And then take your second layer and just gently put it on top like so. And then 
all that we need to do is just take your glaze and just pour it into the center. And what we want it to do is to just, this is a real casual cake, so you just want it to drip down the sides. You would take a spatula and kind of help that. There you go. So there we have our Boston cream pie. This is at its best the day it's made, and you could serve it right away, or you could put it in the uh, refrigerator for a few hours. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Mm -hmm.